Retail group SPA released its interim results highlighting that the ban on cigarettes during South Africa's hard COVID-19 lockdown in 2020 had a long-term impact on sales. The retailer increased group turnover by 7.5% with strong performances from operations in Switzerland and Ireland, as well as reduced operational losses in Poland. SPA Southern Africa delivered wholesale turnover growth of 3.1%, continuing to reflect the weaker consumer spend and disruptions to the liquor business. For more, we are joined by Brett Botten, uh, the CEO of SPA. Brett, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. You're welcome. You're welcome. So I just gave a very quick highlights, but perhaps you can give us more details in terms of the six months that was for SPA. Sure. So, so maybe let's start with uh, with the performance of our overseas geographies. As you've said, we, we're delighted with the performance in, in Ireland and Switzerland. Very strong uh, top line growth and delivering uh, strong operational profit growth as well. Um, I think it talks to the, the, the mix of business we have there. The lockdowns have been harsh in terms of the third wave of the, of the pandemic. Uh, we have a number of stores in Ireland, uh, particularly that are that are not that are out in the suburban areas and in, in the in the outlying towns, which have been well supported by the local communities because they were they were not restricted. They were not allowed to travel further than five kilometres from their homes. So we saw lots of support coming through there. Conversely, though, we have quite a strong presence in in city centre Dublin which, as you can well imagine, was deserted as a result of the lack of tourism and people not working in the city. So we, our stores in the city centre, not only Spa, across the other banners as well, really felt the lockdown. Um, we also have this the food service business, which services hospitality, pubs, restaurants, which is a big part of Irish culture. That business obviously been under pressure now as, as those businesses have been closed. And we expect things to, to normalise now because they're rolling out their vaccine and restrictions are being lifted. So we'll see that food service business coming back on stream People going back to the city, so we'll see our spa businesses in the city increasing uh, in turnover. But at the same time, we can expect to see a, a reduction in the turnovers in the outlying areas. Um, on, from an uh, from a Switzerland perspective, uh, very similar. Uh, we've we've invested a lot, a huge amount of money in stores, upgrades, uh, introduction of our concepts. So convenience retailing in Switzerland, as for us, has been as we've we've been uh, strong in convenience for a while, but we've really upped our offer there, and we've had. We've welcomed new consumers to our stores and they've enjoyed their shopping experiences with us and we expect to hold on to some of those consumers as we move forward. We also have a, a strong uh, cash and carry element which, which supplies what they refer to as the gastro sector, which is uh, restaurants, uh, guest houses, B&Bs and the like, which has been under pressure as, as that sector has been closed. But as we see things opening up now, we see a, a swing back uh, to, some, to, to some business flowing through that sector of our of our business there. And at the same time, we can expect to lose a little bit in, in, in the supermarkets because uh, people will travel and, and go back to some of the shopping malls which they've avoided. However, we have also, during the period, we've, we've brought on a store services AG, a, a, a 60 sport court stores, which is adding adding to our growth we, as we as we supply more and more goods through that channel. So we think that the, the Swiss business and, and the Irish business are very strong. Uh, they delivered great profitability for us, and, and we, we, we are optimistic about what lies ahead as things normalize in Europe. We did touch on Poland. Poland has been challenging for us, uh, very harsh lockdowns imposed in, in Poland because one of the highest infection rates in Europe. We've been challenged in the north of the country where we have a number of big stores in shopping malls, which for all intents and purposes have been closed. Uh, in the south, we have uh, the old spa retailers. When I say old, the ones that were part of spa when we took over that business, there were about 150 or 160 of them at that time. They did not support the spa wholesaler at all, and we managed to grow their loyalty. It's a measure of what they buy through our system right. up to about 25 or 26 percent, which is very positive. Uh, it's not as quick as we had liked, but we've really been hampered by the inability to travel. Uh, we do have now two senior spa executives on the ground in Poland, and and we're making inroads there. So we remain optimistic about that opportunity. Uh, yeah. And perhaps a little bit behind where we. We would like to have been at this stage, but we still, as, as I say, are optimistic and we expect to get to break even point in the first uh, quarter of next yeah. year, 2022. Brett, you mentioned that, uh, you know, we saw restrictions lifted in certain parts of your operations. Let's bring it down locally in terms of South Africa. Uh, we saw similar restrictions lifted when it comes to alcohol and cigarettes. I'm curious from the numbers and what you're seeing, at what point uh, would you be able to see an indication of some kind of um, meaningful recovery in the cigarette business or in the alcohol business? So, so I think the, the alcohol um, has has 
so, so to say, recovered. We, we are um, we are back on track with alcohol. Uh, it, it was we lost in the period under review. We lost forty percent of the trading days, seventy two of the of the days that we didn't weren't able to sell liquor. So it had a significant impact on our on our performance. We we were back negative at seven point eight percent. Unfortunately, our cigarettes cigarettes is still a problem. We we down thirteen percent on prior year. And and we we concerned that that might be here to stay from a point of view of people having having switched allegiance brand allegiance uh, during the lockdown last year when they when after lockdowns when they were cash strapped and they went for cheaper options and also the impact of of the illicit uh, cigarettes in South Africa unfortunately that's that that sort of came arose to prominence during during lockdown and that has continued so we are concerned about the change in in that business or that sector of the business going forward it doesn't seem to be normalizing. At all at the stage. Yeah. Uh, in terms of your outlook, what's your short to medium term expectations when you look at South Africa's consumer spending uh, patterns or behavior? So, so South Africa, obviously our, our um, sales number in South Africa at 0.8% growth, a little disappointing, a little soft, but heavily impacted by the, the month of March alone. You remember March last year was just prior to us going into the, um, the, the, that major lockdown uh, people were pantry loading, and you can you can remember the, the the surge and spike in demand. So, in our in our reporting period, we have one month of that, and and for the next couple of months, we're going to be up against a very high base. So that's going to impact us for certainly for quarter three um, of of our financial year. We are worried, as most of us are, around the financial well being of our consumers. We, they are cash strapped, no question, which does which does make the importance of of, of promotions, uh, aggressive pricing. Uh, sort of private label products as well, which offers good value. Those those uh, are, are things that we are thinking about because of, obviously of the, uh, the consumer being cash strapped and, right. and looking for value, needing to look for value. All right, Brett, thank you so much for your time. That is Brett Button, who is the CEO of SPA, talking to us about the company's interim numbers. The Commission of Inquiry.